All right. So I, I know you guys have all been wondering about where am I going to find my deals? We have inventory issues. Mm -hmm. Most of your major MSAs have got issues with uh, supply. prices going up, mm -hmm. uh, supply issues. And, but we, we always talk about this, that real estate is local. And so not every area is going to have the same uh, thing going on. Yeah. I know when I, I was talking to Jonathan about this uh, yesterday, <clears throat> there's an area in Florida that uh, Wendy and I just got a short term rental in. And I was looking, I was just kind of perusing Zillow. And I told Jonathan yesterday that there is a double wide and it's not even new. It was probably built in the uh, early eighties. Oh yeah. Yeah. So built or uh, installed yeah. in the early eighties on a saltwater canal in Southwest Florida. They had it listed for $585,000, a double wide mobile home on a canal, which you probably could have gotten two years ago for maybe one ninety nine. It was probably what, uh, it would yeah. have gone for it then. I mean, so it, it's wow. amazing when you get into certain areas and you have uh, lack of inventory, what it, what it does to prices. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to uh, share our screen here a little uh, real quick because I got a couple of things I want to show you. What we did, we're going to kind of feature Rock Hill in just a moment. We're, we're going to talk about the migration patterns and where your uh, bedroom communities are coming into play. All right. So here's our map. Mm -hmm. The green <clears throat> is where people are moving to. And these are the top 10 states for either inbound or outbound migration. So yep. the, the green is where they're moving to the red or where they're moving from. And if you'll notice, we're smack dab in the middle of the green. It seems like there's a lot of migration into the Southeast. Uh, obviously the folks from now, it doesn't mean that, uh, Texas isn't getting plenty of people. We know that. We also know that Nevada is getting a lot of people from, yep. from California. And so is Washington. It's just that they're not the top 10. Yeah. <laughs> that said, so you can see number three and number five, Oregon and Arizona for inbound. I mean, that's probably correlated to the exodus of California. Not number one is, uh, Idaho. And number one is, yeah, it's, it's probably all going to Coeur d'Alene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We have, we have some friends that live there and it's crazy. I mm -hmm. think Florida is crazy. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho is nuts. But look at number two, number two for inbound migration, yeah, South Carolina, South Carolina. And we're going to, we're going to show you a bedroom community of Charlotte, which is Rock Hill, South Carolina. That is exactly where our office is located. Uh, it's interesting and don't hate me if you're from uh, North or South Dakota, if you're a Dakotian, I can only assume that uh, North Dakota, somebody told them to move South for better weather. <laughs> so they just moved one state. You know, I wonder if that, you know, obviously there's, you know, there's incentives for, for moving to South Dakota, but um, I do see a lot of um, conservatives moving there just for the, the political aspect of it as well. Well, both the Dakotas have, uh, are in the energy sector mm -hmm. uh, as far as their, their jobs. And, yeah. Uh, and, you know, either one of them is going to be cold in the winter. So I don't, <laughs> there's, there's kind but of, I'd rather be in the South of the Dakotas <laughs> than the North if it's going to be cold. Yeah. So, uh, what we're going to show you here is a little walk about if you're, if, if you, you don't understand what a bedroom community is, it's going to be, um, the communities that surround your MSAs, mm -hmm. uh, major MSAs. So Charlotte is like the 15th largest city in the United States. Yep. And prices are getting uh, higher and higher there because as populations move in, yep. uh, where are you going to go? So you're going to start going out to the surrounding areas. Yep. Uh, the, the bedroom communities first and foremost that they're going to go to are the ones that have easy interstate access. So anything off the major, of, you know, 77 MSA. or 85, if we're talking about Charlotte. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have easy, quick commuting access to the major population center, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are going to move to the bedroom communities for a couple of reasons. One, uh, we had a tendency uh, in the last 10 years, people were moving 
into the urban areas. They like the walkability. They like being able to yeah. uh, walk to the corner coffee shop or uh, uh, the bar or restaurant that they mm -hmm. want to go to. And that's what they loved about the urban uh, living. A lot of people are now moving to the suburbs, number one, because of crime. Number one, you're typically, or number two, your schools are, are typically better. Yep. So they're moving to the suburbs, but they still like that uh, kind of a urban feel as well, the walkability. I'll tell you what, everyone always calls me right when we're on this. Well, that's because they're seeing My you. contractor always calls me when I'm on this show. <laughs> that's the way it goes. <laughs> So I, I did a, a walk about town. This is uh, one of our uh, borrowers who started this project. He's building um, Charleston style homes. He bought a track of land that covers almost a city block. And if you're not familiar with Charleston style homes that we call them tall skinnies, they're you know, <laughs> usually two or three levels and they are very long. This is a style of home that is uh, predominant in the historic area of uh, downtown Charleston, South mm -hmm. Carolina. Yep. Uh, the difference here, these are new, and as you can see, they're square. The ones in Charleston, if they're leaning to one side, they call that character. <laughs> but, they, <laughs> but they were built 100 years ago, and the, the soil there tends to drift around a little bit. So as you can see, there's enough room for one more set of foundation on this side of the lot. Uh, this foundation just went up, as you can tell. And in this case, we're not financing this particular spot because it's already sold. The borrower uh, went ahead and got their own financing for the construction. We finance the one that uh, you're seeing right beside of that, uh, this, this white home. I love the little front porches. I'm trying to give you a little indication of what the streets look like. And it's, uh, by the way, I have to mention my little iPhone takes one heck of a video. Is it not? <laughs> yeah, that was your iPhone. That's really good. Yeah. I did That's this really whole good. thing with my iPhone. It's amazing. The technology in your phone. And, um, and these houses are between 1800 and 2400 square feet. Right. Is, is the size of these houses typically three twos or, or four threes. And now the ones that are existing that are already built, uh, I believe, uh, what was our loan amounts on those generally around? The first one that we built, the construction uh, amount was 206000 and it ended up selling for $339,000. Uh, the next one that we financed, uh, prices went up. The um, construction budget went up to about 220000 and uh, anticipated to be around that same three thirty to, to three fifty mark. For, for the um, ARV. As you can tell by the size of that house, that's very affordable. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, the one that's uh, under construction right now that we're financing is taking a little bit longer because they only have the one guy to do the job. Whoa. So if you're a little motion uh, <laughs> sickness <laughs> challenge, uh, I, don't, wow. I didn't think you wanted me to spend 20 minutes because uh, that's how long it took me to walk through town. <laughs> so I sped up the, the, the video a little bit. So this is Fountain Park, as you can tell, it didn't take long to walk uh, to really the, the downtown area. About uh, three we, seconds. We, <laughs> we, we've been here for five years and the one day I decided to film town, oh, they, have they got half the water out of the fountain, the fountain is under uh, maintenance. But you know, this is a, a quaint little town. They're getting ready to build an outdoor entertainment facility on the left side of this park. It's going to have a nice uh, bandstand. And Isn't there a hotel band. going in somewhere? There's a hotel going right across there in that blank spot. And as we go up here, you'll see the where they've already torn down a little bit of a, of a building. And they had a shared wall. I guess they'll paint that wall eventually. Um, but this gives you an idea of, you know, the, the like I said, the quaintness of a, a little small town. Uh, it still has a, a nice uh, core urban area that, uh, the businesses there are still thriving, even coming out of, uh, of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, these buildings were built between late, very late 1800s and mid, uh, uh, probably around 1930, 35. I'm going to back this up just in a little bit. I want to show you this. This at the end of the street is brand new housing and it does 
comply or look a lot like uh, the rest of the, the downtown area. Mm -hmm. So uh, they did a nice job. At, this is only a couple of years old. Yeah, I think uh, just two years old. Yeah, yeah. Like luxury apartments right there mm -hmm. in downtown. Um, this parking lot across the street from the building uh, offers express uh, bus trips into downtown Charlotte. You just park there and uh, get on the bus uh, go to downtown Charlotte. You see the construction. So we're going to move in a little bit slower. I want you to see the factory across the street. That used to be a textile mill. They redeveloped it into office and uh, retail as well as uh, residential. Mm -hmm. Behind that, and we'll just let it go, uh, there's also an entertainment facility, indoor sports arena, right behind that factory. Here is a brand new development that's going up. It's got 177 units of luxury apartments. Uh, the building to the right you can see going up, that's retail and restaurants, uh, dining, uh, office as well. As you can see, the city itself and the state, look at this, those sidewalks. They're improving all the walkability areas in these areas because now they're getting all this tax revenue mm -hmm. and they're improving all this. Now, it's been taking a, a little bit longer on our street. <laughs> and this is our street. But they yeah. are um, improving the sidewalks here as well. And lastly, a shameless uh, promotion, promotion of Carolina Capital Management. Yep. Uh, this is the building we occupy the top floor. It's a th three unit condo. So there's three businesses in here. It used to be the, it was the, the top floor. It was the first post office in, in Rock Hill. Um, and then uh, yeah, they, and they built the bigger one in 19, whatever it was like 1930. And they moved this one uh, a block from where it was to where it is yeah. today. Yeah. Um, and the fun story is they moved it. Uh, well, they reached out to um, engineering firms to see how they could move it. And all the engineering firms said that you, you can't move it. Um, and then some local guy said, well, I've got some mules and some rollers. I bet I can move it. And that's what he did. <laughs> yep. Uh, wagon and a, a team of mules. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were bringing fresh mules in every week is what I understand. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, that, that building, not only was it the original post office, once they moved it to its new location, they turned it into the public library. Yep. Until 72, and, and then and, it became Yeah. This. So it, it's a historical building. Mm -hmm. um, we, 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 love, we love them because it has character, but at the same time, the insulation isn't that great. I love the burlap sacks on my wall, you know, like the yeah, whatever that, that is. Yeah, but that was interior design from the 80s. Oh, yeah, that was. Yeah, <clears> so what, the reason we're bringing all of this up is that, the again, the demographics are changing. People are, uh, number one, they're, they're moving into the suburbs because it costs less. They're moving into the suburbs because the school districts are a little bit uh, better. Taxes. They're, taxes are more favorable, typically, because you're in the next county over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but you still have the component of being in that urban setting where uh, downtown Rock Hill's got uh, three different uh, microbreweries in there. They've got uh, nice little specialty restaurants. They're not chain restaurants. I know the first one I walked by was the Jimmy John's, but that's really the only chain type of restaurant that's even in, in the downtown area. All yep. of them are locally owned. They all have their own little, uh, you know, uh, uh, American flair or. Uh, Asian flair or uh, Italian. It just, again, it's, it's not a chain. So you're going to get some nice specialty uh, dining experiences uh, mm -hmm. in, in those areas. Now, uh, Jonathan uh, has uh, properties in other parts of uh, our MSA, our bedroom communities. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about Concord and Kannapolis? And, sure. Yeah. And Salisbury. Yeah. It's the same thing. I mean, so, uh, Concord is a, I don't have a video to show, um, but, uh, it's a, it's a cute town. Um, it's, it's really growing. Same thing. So the whole, the whole takeaway from this is, um, it's our belief that focusing in on those bedroom communities is where your wins are going to be for the next few years. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we're talking about Charlotte specifically, I mean, Concord, Kannapolis, Salisbury, uh, Gastonia, Rock Hill, 
Um, and a Monroe would be another one, um, Huntersville, but that's really, that's kind of already known and pretty, yeah, pretty and developed. You get out a little bit further to, um, Kings Mountain mm -hmm. uh, is really on the outskirts of being a bedroom community. Salisbury <clears throat> took a long time for it to start to, to move, but it, it was because of the interstate situation. Yep. It took them a while to finally improve the interstate to where mm -hmm. it's taking you 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get into town. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the main draw. You, you want to be far enough out uh, where you, where you are in that little community, uh, but you need to have access to get to the major MSA uh, fairly quickly. I mean, you don't want it to be a whole day trip. No, tip, I mean, typically what you find in better bedroom communities, they're a 45 minute drive from the, the downtown area of the major Metro. Um, so if you look at Rock Hill, we're what, 25 minutes, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, Concord is going to be the same thing. 20, 25 minutes. Kannapolis, uh, Gastonia is going to be, you know, 25, 30 minutes. Um, Monroe might be closer to that 30, 35 minute. Monroe doesn't have a interstate. <clears throat> it has a four lane state highway, but there's a lot of traffic lights and stuff. Yeah. So it takes you a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, to get out that way. I, I live out that way and it's just, it's booming like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's uh, bedroom communities are, are state. I mean, that, that's where we see the migration patterns mm -hmm. going. We see more build outs. I mean, just in that little walk you did around Rock Hill, how, you know, the new construction that was going on. And you can see that people are doubling down on rentals. Yes. On multifamily and, and single family rentals. Keep in mind too, you're not going to be competing with the big hedge fund uh, folks that are coming in and buying up all the single family. They want to be in the major MSA. Uh, they want to have homes that are uh, 15 years old or newer, mm -hmm. and they are paying way too much for them uh, because they can. You know, what's interesting um, in my neighborhood, my neighbor is in the process of, uh, I guess, They've got the they got the final uh, number from Zillow, so Zillow's been trying to buy their their home, mm -hmm. and Zillow is paying them a hundred over a hundred thousand more to buy their home than what I paid for my home three years ago, and my home is almost a thousand square feet bigger and double the lot size. Like it's insane what's going on, like these eye buyers coming in and doing that. So, I mean, Zillow is, you know, what are they, do you think they're going to um, resell that and make a few thousand bucks? Or do you think they're going to put a tenant in there? Well, it's hard to say because you get them up uh, to a, a particular point and you can't justify renting it. Uh, well, with, it depends on what your cost of carry is on your, on your funds. And I heard something recently um, that, uh, Zillow's, uh, whatever it's called, uh, purchasing directly is actually, they continue to lose money in that particular, um, side of the business. So while mm -hmm. they have plenty of money, they're not going to continue to do something that's losing them money. They're, so, uh, I, I don't, I don't know how far that's going to go with, well, the, with that part of the I buyer thing. Well, what do you like? I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here what would motivate someone to do something for an extended period of time of losing money? It's not because they're stupid. Well, sometimes they need to write off other parts. That's making per money. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. I mean, or they're banking on something else. Yeah. You know, listen, uh, single family rentals is very popular because let's face it, you can't put your money uh, in anything else that is going to produce a decent yield. Um, the reason the stock market is booming is because you can't make any money in the bond market. Mm -hmm. uh, the companies that are starting to pay dividends, you're going to see a lot of people dumping money into their stocks.